Duke Saragossa. 18-year-old Max Holloway makes his debut in MMA. He starts off with a 1-2 and there is already a few noticeable things. Max looks exactly the same 14 years ago. So the best base in MMA is to look identical for decades. From his stance and his speed, it really looks like Max didn't really have a different style. He always has that strong, firm, pressuring boxing style. What an amazing team corner. Max actually has good takedown defense as his debut fight and dominates in the stand-up game. And dominates on the ground game when he wants to as well. And that was just round one. Max is always known for his volume that chips down the enemy so you won't get that one punch KO. Well... This is what the script would say in 2023, but suddenly in 2024, Max just decided to... Yeah, uh, I'll just save it later on in the video. The fight ends in a unanimous decision. Absolutely destroyed him. Hurt him so bad, he took a seven-year gap in his career. Bryson Kamaka. Yeah, small fact, Max wasn't blessed at the time. His name was Little Evil. In the blue corner. I've never seen someone have such an opposite fighter name switch up in their career before. Bruh, I can't be Little Evil fighting out of God's army. It makes no sense. Like, it was, just, uh, it was just stewing with me for a long time, you know, and like staying with me. Bro, like, well, how can you not name me? You know, you usually, you're quick with these. Like, you have it, you know? And he's like, well, I can't name you. The, f the only word that keeps popping on my mind is bless. And I was like, I was like, I take it. He's like, you take what? I was like, I take the name bless. And he's like, well, I guess it's a nickname now. Another thing I noticed in his stand-up game is probably his muscle memory. I feel like he's actively boxing and reading them as he goes because he's so inexperienced. Really different from the current Max Holloway where he comes off the bat with ultra instinct. <laughs> Bryson got tired from the striking for a bit and decides to level change. I think Bryson wanted to stack guard or something, but Max denied it and got back up. Max didn't like how he changed levels and KO'd him real quick. <laughs> Harris Samiento. This is the X1 title shot and it's only his third professional MMA fight. This goes the distance and I think everyone knows Max is a volume fighter rather than a KO artist. So this can be very boring for most people. I'm doing you guys a solid and compressing a 40 minute fight video into a couple of moments. The good thing about Max is his chin. He can adopt this volume style where he can chip down every part of your body until a rock happens. If you don't have a solid chin, you can get knocked out before you can find a weakness in your opponent. The first kick actually turned on Harris's leg. The second one also. Oh! Oh! oh it looks like he's, uh, he's hurting Harris Armiento. Sarmiento's in trouble and all he can do is tie up Holloway. See, that would have finished the fight. But Max is still quite young and inexperienced. He's just 19 here. Harris usually never changes stance either. Nice flying knee there, another flying knee. Another flying knee, that one connected on the chin of Harris Sarmiento. For a young kid, Holloway has a tough chin. He has been rocked a couple of times by Sarmiento with that sweeping left hand. And yet Holloway seems unfazed. We reach the final round and you know it's been a while if the cameraman is doing a panning shot. But don't worry, Max still shows no weakness and keeps it going strong. Crowd urging these fighters to finish strong. And there's the bell. Fighting out of God's army, Max Lillibor. Holloway! 
Eddie Rincon. Max does the same thing against his other opponent, just breaking him down slowly. Sadly, this is the only footage and it has copyrighted music over it, but you can guarantee this fight still established Max as a solid fighter, and just after this fight comes a banger. Yes, a featherweight bout and who would have thought at this time this is a lifelong banger. 23 year old Dustin versus 20 year old Max. The fight starts and it goes pretty well. There were many exchanges, mostly boxing and it looks very even. Dare I say Max just looks a bit better. But all of that is about to change when both fighters realize it's MMA and not kickboxing. Dustin gets the takedown very easily and submits Max by a triangle armbar. It's sad that we reached a round one loss for our UFC debut, but this is our blessed man right here and he always makes a comeback. But it's also sad to think that in this modern era, if a 4-0 fighter loses his UFC debut fight, they make fraud check and washed memes already. Pat Chilling Sadly, this fight was in the Ultimate Fighter live event, so I don't believe there is a fight replay on this. If there is, it's not on YouTube or any other official website. But Max gets the win via unanimous decision. It's also unfortunate that's the only information I can provide. Hopefully, there are some comments down below that can talk about this fight. Justin Lawrence Coming in 5-1, I still think Max is suffering just a tiny bit from that one loss. I'm not sure about Dustin around this time, but Max himself was definitely a nobody, so there is a bit of insecurity here. He fights as usual, but accidentally hits Justin in the nuts. Twice. To get in. Good kick oh. to that strike. I was just gonna say good kick to the body, and I guess it wasn't in the body. Although Max seems to be naturally good at boxing. He's really strong and fast with his hands, especially compared to everyone he's fought so far. But it's his kickboxing that is a bit lacking at this point. And not to mention the two leg nut shots. Max gets his range and lands a solid knee now and follows it up well with body shots that drop Justin. And that's game. TKO by Max Holloway. Leonard Garcia. I, sw I swear I'm scripting this as I watch these fights because... I just called it here. Max coming in in the first round plays it a bit smarter, using his lead leg to strike and get a real life gauge of distance and also using a lot of teeps. And when the time was right, just a minute later, he drops Garcia. Aggressive exchanges all the time. Oh, he got clipped. He got the distance right with the kicks and knew the perfect length to close in into the pocket with the straight and crack him with a jab. Solid play. The fight ends in a split decision where Max came out as the winner. It was a split decision because Garcia did land his own shots that sounded more brutal, but Max just had an iron chin. And on paper, Max the whole fight had more significant strikes and one knockdown so the stats don't lie and he won that way. Dennis Bermudez Sadly, I cannot find footage of this, and if I did, it's over, the channel's just over. So the b-roll footage is images from the match, and Max lost this fight. Again, people can comment down their thoughts on the fight that have watched it, but looking at the stats and the images and interviews, it looked like Max couldn't dominate him in the striking, where the strikes landed are basically the same, and Max got out-wrestled. Not good, but he is still a very, very young fighter. 7 wins and 2 losses is definitely not a bad record to hold, and let's hope it gets better next time. Conor McGregor. Well, shit. This isn't good. No words needed. All I really need to say is, featherweight Conor McGregor. Max just couldn't get a read from Connor and never had his moment in this fight. His volume striking had been shut down and he landed about half the amount of strikes as Connor and got out wrestled. I mean, we can't blame his hesitancy. Connor is a karate southpaw who is extremely fast and extremely powerful. There's really not much to do here but learn from the loss. Also, the only moment that was spectacular was the Robert Whittaker special Max did. An open stance went one two head kick and hit Connor. It wasn't a knockdown, but he fell just enough to land on a supporting arm in the last minute of the fight. I'll take that as an achievement. Will Chope. The moment he lost to McGregor, something awakened in Holloway. 
I don't know what it was, but it was crazy. People talk about Tony Ferguson's legendary 12 fight win streak. We forget about Max Holloway's. The beginning was against Will Chop, a 6 foot 3 featherweight. Max plays it smart against the giant where he circles and goes backwards a lot. It will frustrate and confuse Will. When Max feels like it, he can circle around him and cut in with perfect timing where he wins the exchange. I don't have first hand experience, but I'm pretty sure if you fight a 6 foot 3 featherweight, there are some major cons. Heading into round 2, you are just really slow and tired. As a lanky dude, you can't move as agile and as powerful as a shorter, more muscled fighter. And also with a drastic weight cut, you are probably more chinny. And there you go, KO by Max. This is exactly where he doesn't want to be. A beautiful combination to body shot by Max Holloway. Max Holloway with the TKO victory over Will Chope and look good doing it. Andre Philly. This fight was also really hard to find, but I found something even better. Max Holloway's own cinematic commentary on how he felt during the fight. Clay Collard. This fight doesn't exist on YouTube as well. I'm starting to wonder why. This was an extremely good fight, so UFC replay, do your job. The only footage we got on YouTube is a guy recording his TV, and it's the finish where Max TKO's Clay. It showed Max getting Clay's back and pressing him down to pound him. That was so out of context, I apologize. You get the idea though, Max finished him. Back to back finishes. Akira Korasani. Round 1 and these boys went at it for some reason. I don't know too much about Akira, but he wanted to box. Not sure why, but he did. And this is the perfect opportunity for Max to prove his power. During this time, and even now, Max is memed for having pillow hands. And his volume makes up for his lack of power. Max proved the haters wrong in this fight where he dropped Akira with a 1-1 pull 1-2. Akira tries in his last power to clinch, but Max escapes and does a 1-2 again. Well, more like an overhand. Someone said this was a TKO. Hell no, bro is straight up unconscious. He is dead. Cole Miller. This is another unavailable fight, but I believe Max outperformed extremely well here. What we know about Cole Miller at this point of time is that he won by submission 15 times. Max stated that he only submits because he managed to get the knockdown on his opponents first. So Max's game plan is to never get knocked down so it will never reach the grappling or submitting game at all. And looking at the stats? Yes! If anything, Max got a takedown and got more significant strikes. I know just looking at these don't tell the whole story, but I would say this is at least enough to say it's not a robbery and Max won. Cub Swanson this is a really good fight just to really differentiate how much Max has improved as a fighter overall. He is definitely a different person from the first fight of this video. It's subtle because Max's boxing is always good but you can see the changes. Max can now advance well and just has a lot more weapons in his arsenal now. He knows how to kickbox a lot better. This is what happens to a person who loses and learns from a Dustin Poirier and a Conor McGregor. And not to mention the finish here as well. Max hits the body repeatedly until it looks like a TKO. Swanson goes for a takedown but fails, leaving Max controlling the top. Max goes for an arm triangle but soon Swanson gets up. But not long after, he gets nearly TKO'd again and this time Max gets it done with a guillotine choke. I told you, this Max is a different fighter. Charles Oliveira. I wouldn't count this as a fight, sadly. It was a TKO win for Max Holloway, but we know how amazing these two people are. They are fighters. They trained blood, sweat and tears to fight at their best and it's just horrible to see freak incidents. Max accidentally tore Charles' esophagus which must have been in another level of concern and pain. Thank goodness Charles made his comeback in his career. It would be amazing to see these two guys run it back in their late prime or as a retirement fight matchup. Doesn't matter, it will be amazing regardless. Jeremy Stevens. Max Holloway, who is ranked 5, needs to defend that rank by fighting Jeremy Stevens. Also fun fact, the main event of this same card is another featherweight fight. It was Aldo vs McGregor. So this is quite an iconic night. Fight begins and Holloway does a good job refining his craft. 
This is the most we've seen him so far fighting in Southpaw. He's switching between the two a lot and doing combinations with them too. But for some reason, Max is mostly in Southpaw which is very surprising. Surprisingly good. Beautiful right hand by Max Holloway. And there's another one. Excellent. Check right hand. There's another right hook. This fight was going pretty even until the third round. Max showed some more MMA skills where he had more power to grapple Jeremy, absolutely dominating him on the ground. And then they went back to their feet before the fight finished. Jeremy tries to gas it all out, but he's just too tired to land anything clean on a fresh Holloway. Winner by unanimous decision, Max Holloway. Ricardo Lamas. This is slowly becoming Max we've grown to truly love. He established himself even more where he is mostly in Southpaw and gets a few clean shots from it. Not only that, he's gone and tried to submit Ricardo twice. But yeah, let's just skip to the most iconic part of the fight. You will never see another fighter set up a final second showdown like Max Holloway. We had Lamas in trouble multiple occasions. Wow, it looks like they're going to swing to the very end. Anthony Pettis. After back-to-back -back wins, he's coming off a 9-win fight streak. Max Holloway gets the opportunity to fight for the interim featherweight bout against Anthony Pettis. It's safe to say Pettis got blessed that night. If you want to touch it up, do it now, go back to your corner. He didn't shake my hand, I was like, well, it's time for an ass whooping time now. <laughs> this fight had a lot going on. It's the real-life version of two friends just figuring out how to play EA UFC. There's jumping switch kicks, spinning back kicks, and lots and lots of volume. Later in the fight, Max drops Pettis clean with a punch but lets him up. For some reason, this angered Pettis even more, feeling like Max was taunting him. He probably was, but watch the temper. The aggressor here so far, he has. Oh, oh big shot. Oh, he gets mad at this. That's how he gets up. I remember this, and I told him, <laughs> he's mad. <laughs> and Max lands perfectly somewhere on the liver and shuts down Pettis. He finishes it off with strikes and wins with that finish. Our new interim featherweight champion. We are finally seeing the fruits of his labor and there is still a lot more fruits to come, if that made any sense. Also, this is the perfect opportunity to showcase Max Holloway's side missions before the final boss. In no chronological order, Max has done a variety of things during his UFC career. Jump started a gaming platform, collaborated with Matsumoto Shave Ice to assert Hawaiian pride dominance, also an actor in Hawaii 5 an actor in Dinner Thieves, and many more. He also mentioned he is a big anime fan and he stated his latest KO was a jet pistol. A homage to Monkey D. Luffy from One Piece. I think you know what fight I'm talking about, so... You just need to wait for now. Jose Aldo. In enemy soil, Max packs his bags to Rio and challenges the reigning champion Jose Aldo. Max proves the haters wrong again where he does not have pillow hands. He does get rocked first throughout the fight where Aldo is much more set and much more accurate with his shots. Which most likely surprised Max wondering why a guy so much shorter is hitting so hard and eats a flush knee while rocked. Yeah, that, that's his chin talking. No one else can tank that. And he taunts Aldo because he doesn't have a chin. I feel like Max is putting on a show because it is an undisputed championship fight right now. Max dodges a knee mid combination and still pushes Aldo with his pressure. I have never seen someone do that. And here comes the fateful moment. Max creeps in slowly with feints just so he can be in range. Throws a jab in which Aldo goes in for the check hook but it was actually a 1-2 combination and not just a jab by Max Holloway and clips Aldo and does it again for the knockdown. Aldo does his best on the ground to survive. It goes well for a solid minute but not enough to defend himself and get up. Winner by TKO, Max Holloway. Jose Aldo 2. Betting on such a go to champion with many title defenses in his resume, it only makes sense for them to run it back. Max comes in as a huge favorite with everyone thinking he's going to win the rematch. Fight begins and nothing too much happened in round 1. I would say Aldo is getting just the better of the fight, slightly with more hits landed and solid leg kicks. 
but I would watch out for his cardio. And of course, the round ended to make it very interesting. Yep, that's the iconic UFC taunt right there. Aldo fainted a body jab after doing them for the whole round just to do a rare uppercut that hurt Max. It's a bit sad to watch such a trump card being flopped like that because of a dense skull. Round goes well for Aldo where he finally establishes the leg kicks. He did some in the first round, but now he really makes it a game plan. I think it's a little too late to see dividends though because Aldo is just too tired to make Max worried about it. At the end of the round, Max does a flying knee to assert cardio dominance. It's clearly what it's for, that's the only reason. Round 3 and Aldo is definitely tired. He's fighting with his mouth open, like the mouth guard is about to fall out. And that's when Max comes in for the kill. He is relentless. He wants to break every cell in your body, not just knock you out. He lands over a hundred shots on Aldo, pause, and he just cannot defend. And Herb Dean calls it off, win it by TKO. Brian Ortega. Max destroyed Brian so bad, they had to make an alter ego of Max from this fight. Granted, Ortega is nowhere near a Jose Aldo in terms of striking, so this is easy money for Max. But still, we know this match was about 20 minutes long, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, look at this round 3 right hand and spinning elbow by Ortega. The crowd went wild from the sound, but Max just just shrugs it off. All we know is that moment where Max straight up taught Brian how to block hooks properly. After getting spinning elbowed, Max was still nice enough to teach him how to survive. Sadly, he didn't survive. Doctor stoppage from the swelling around Brian Ortega's eye. Dustin Poirier 2. Just 4 months after that fight, Max wanted to jump to the next biggest opportunity. And that was the rematch against his old rival, Dustin Poirier. Not only that, it was for the lightweight interim bout. It was only 4 months, so Max didn't have the time to fully train himself to be a true lightweight. He was more of a featherweight that didn't need to cut down as much. It might not look different from far away, but his second jump to lightweight in 2024 was different where he was built more lean and trained a lot longer to adjust to lightweight properly. So yes, I'm already basically saying he lost this fight. It's okay though, it's another division he doesn't really belong in right now. But in round 1, Max clips Poirier really good and it's not strong enough to do that much. And later Dustin comes rushing in, rocking Max this time. And also at the last minute of round 2, Max did get dropped. Well, not technically, because the fence caught his fall and bounced him right up. But if it wasn't there, that would have been a full knockdown. Max still has heart though and carries on fighting very well. Then the last minute of round 4 shows Max getting caught with a knee that cuts him. This division is different. Max can camouflage the damage in featherweight, but him stumbling and bleeding hardcore here is worrying. Fight ends with Max still holding his ground as a strong as fuck fighter. But he lost his 13 win fight streak and he got 49-46. The comments portray it better than me. Max was too small for his weight class, but man he held his own. Classic fight, respect to both future legends. Dustin's boxing defense when he knows there's no threat of a takedown is a thing of beauty. Max absolutely does not have the power to be messing with Justin Gagey. It would be a bad move for Max. Frankie Edgar. After that side quest failed, he tries to defend the bout against Frankie Edgar. I will just spoil it now. Frankie Edgar got outclassed. It's sad for the ex-champion, but it's true. Nothing seemed to stick, and if it did, it didn't for long enough. He got 50-45 and lost. Max looked as good as ever, and it was more of a downfall of Edgar fight. Following this, Edgar lost by KOs until retirement. Except for one fight where it was a cheeky split decision win over Pedro Munoz. Alexander Volkanovsky. The challenger Alex fights the champion Max Holloway. While watching this fight, I began to think Max may have underestimated Volk a bit. He just finished his side quest with Dustin Poirier, but watching this fight, Volk is just a featherweight Dustin Poirier. He's shorter, but fights a lot tighter and more efficiently, like Dustin. He gets shots in with his accurate punches and his leg kicks. The problem with Max is that his momentum gets shut down occasionally, and he's just a natural slow starter. And new. Just like Aldo, it was rightfully deserved they should run it back. Alexander Volkanovsky too. Run it back as usual, but it's extra shit because it was during COVID. 
so the fight was during quarantine times and there is no extra adrenaline and showmanship that Max usually does in his iconic fights. In the first round, Max does get the better of Alex with a solid high kick. It dropped Alex to one knee and nearly counted as a knockdown. And once again, another quote-unquote knockdown at the end of round two. But this is where it gets controversial. Alex makes a comeback with better wrestling and striking now. Sadly, the first two rounds was just a 10-9 to Max despite the big knockdowns and Alex won the rest of the rounds arguably leading to the split decision. Calvin Qatar After the 0-2 losses to Volk, the matchmakers are kinda doubting Max as a champion level fighter and now they're seeing how well he does against Calvin. Both want to play it on the feet so let's see if Holloway still has his game on point. And not even going to hype it up, Max just surprised everyone. He was not washed at all. At the second round and near the last minute, Max cut open Qatar twice with his elbows. Calvin tries his best to survive and it feels like Max is just playing up his record for the most strikes in UFC history. And although this is still no crowd covert times, Max pulls out a show for us anyway. <laughs> He points at the UFC. He's even listening to the commentary team. The best stop the UFC, baby. Oh, oh, right here. Oh, 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 oh. Yair yeah, yeah, Rodriguez. This is a fight just in between the third bout for the Volk rematch. This was still a good fight though, but it was nowhere near the threat we thought it was looking back now. Yair did really good at the start with the leg kicks and striking, but he forgot who he was fighting. That's right, the slow starting Max Holloway, and to make it worse, it was a 5 rounder. Yair clearly wasn't prepared for this level of cardio and suffered. The bad cardio was vented in strange ways. I think Yair just wanted to get the finish quick because he can't survive this war, so his fight IQ just takes a toll. That basically summed it up, and Max wins via unanimous decision. And title shot, here we come. Alexander Volkanovsky 3. Comeback time for Max? Or it's another two rerun fights back to the title shot? If you guessed the second one, then you're correct. Volk just looked even bolder which means he was even better. Nothing too much to highlight about Max, sadly. It's definitely better than getting knocked out, but he's still definitely lost by decision this time. After the giant cut punch that damaged Max, it was obvious to the world now that Max's style just isn't right for Alex. Arnold Allen After his third loss against the current champion, Max is kinda in a lost spot. He can't really just have another back-to-back -back fight with Alex, although that might be the case, but there's some issues. Max got hurt real bad and got dominated. There isn't really a fourth fight rivalry unless it's extremely even, and the UFC thinks Max has fallen off now. Good thing this fight exists. Arnold Allen, a very solid top contender, fights Max Holloway. He's coming in with 19 wins and one loss, so he's pretty up there. His only loss was before the UFC in a local scene and nine years before this fight. You could have argued Arnold could have been the one to end Max's career and be a potential champion, but that fell short. Yes, looking at this fight, it feels like Arnold wasn't prepared for Max to fight in Southpaw for most of the fight. And if you are two strikers, that plays a big role. Arnold is also a southpaw and is a fast starter and probably won the start. But Max always returns with something even better and picks up momentum as the fight goes on. This keeps going until the final second showdown happens again and Arnold gets dropped. Winner by decision, Max Holloway. And Arnold's first ever loss in the UFC. Jung Chang Sung Honestly, this is just a free win and filler fight to keep Max busy. Coincidentally, this is good timing for the Korean Zombie to pack his bags too. After getting destroyed by Volk, TKZ kinda had nothing left going and he's too old now. But two OGs, Max and TKZ never actually fought, back before the Reebok and Venom days as well. So they both found it a privilege to finally face one another. Yeah, pretty wholesome. But Korean Zombie basically dies in the third. As sad as that was, it's nowhere near as emotional as his final walkout to his own theme song. Justin Gaethje There is too much to talk about with this fight. It has recency bias of course, but my god this goes down in fighting combat history as well. Justin Gaethje recently KO'd a Dustin Poirier and is the BMF holder, prepares for Max Holloway. Max has two losses against Dustin, so if MMA maths is right, Max will get destroyed, and the fans thought so too. 
even the top fighters made YouTube videos saying how stupid Max is for doing this. His resume is seen in a more negative perspective because of the three losses to Volk and two losses to Dustin. But at the end of the day, this guy is still Max Holloway and he's a bad motherfucker too. I'm being extra careful with the visuals here because of copyright but there's nothing too crazy to say because a lot of you still remember this fight. Max plays it super smart where he avoids the power of Gagey and just gets his licks in patiently. At the end of round 1, a spinning back kick broke Gagey's nose affecting the whole fight. Since round 2, Gagey was literally a walking TKO. But he was a top 3 lightweight for a reason and dropped Max with a punch just after a clinch. But as the fight goes on, the more Max chips him down. And here comes the most iconic part of UFC 2024. Alright, he, he is the BMF. He will always be the blessed motherfucker. I mean blessed, blessed man forever. Alright, peace.